Chad, why is it a break? Is there getting oh, any witness? Right. So just so that we're on the same page, you can have a seat. <laughs> Keep standing the whole time. All right. Just so we're on the same page with Mr. Knight's testimony. Actually, could Mr. Knight go back out? Please. Yeah, get the fuck out of my courtroom, dog. All right, all right. So we're on the same page with Mr. Knight's testimony. Um, there is a rule on witnesses. However, Mr. Knight's a rebuttal witness. Um, the purpose of excluding witnesses uh, from the courtroom, usually it's a courtroom, is to deprive a, a, a later witness of the opportunity to shape testimony to correspond with that of an earlier witness. Um, the issue we have here, obviously, if it was a direct witness in the direct testimony, you had time to do a rule on witnesses, let them know about the rule on witnesses. With a rebuttal witness, it's a little different because um, they didn't know they were going to be a witness. You didn't know they were going to be a witness. I understand that part. The problem is the courtroom in this particular case appears to be the world. So huh, what we have to true. do here is um, I'm going to do a voir dire and I'll, let, I'll allow both sides to ask questions as well of Mr. Knight to see what he has seen of the case. And I'm just going to use the factors um, that the case law in Virginia uses, which uh, the factors to consider because the court does yes, have that, broad discretion to permit or prohibit a witness um, to testify in this particular circumstance. So the factors I'm going to consider is if the impropriety was intentional, which we'll My find mouse out, jammed. Uh, the prejudice attached to it, also, if the excluded witness learned about substantial substantive aspects of the case from an earlier testifying witness and whether that knowledge had any effect on his or her testimony. So those are the three factors I'm going to look at in weighing this decision. Um, so keep that in mind when you do your voir dire. And it's my understanding that the evidence that Mr. Knight will testify only relates to Hicksville. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Now we can have Mr. Knight. So basically what he's trying to say is that trying to make it make sure that it's his information only and his testimony and nothing that he found or heard on the trial because of the broadcast or whatever so he's not skewed in any way and if he do, if he is skewed in some ways that he shouldn't be or he could only know if he watched and he's gonna get smoked. Right, sir, Mr. Knight, if you could come forward to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case in a penalty of law? I do. I do. I Sorry, swear. Sir, just have a seat, please. I do. Sir, I swear. So help me God. What we're doing is I'm just going to ask you a few questions outside the presence of the jury, and then the attorneys are going to ask you a few questions, okay? Sure. And then I'm going to have you step back outside after that, okay? No problem. All right. What's your full name, sir? Uh, Morgan Hickey Knight. <laughs> okay, you don't have to be that close. All right. All right. How do you spell your last name? N I G H T. Okay. All right, and sir. Um, before I can allow you to testify, I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, have you seen any of the trial that's been going on for the past six weeks? Um, approximately five weeks ago, a friend of mine texted me that Hicksville was mentioned, and I watched a little clip where okay. it was mentioned. Which clip did you watch? Um, I believe it was uh, somebody testifying about, I think it was the security guard testifying maybe about Hicksville or um, I forget exactly who was testifying, but it was something where Hicksville was mentioned and uh, it was uh, about something about a wrist or something like that. All right. And what did you do after that? Did at some point did you get in contact with attorneys? So I didn't reach out to them. Um, I didn't really care. The, okay. uh, the innkeepers that worked at Hicksville before reached out to them and said, we saw some stuff that wasn't true. And then they asked, is it okay if I give the attorneys your phone number? So the attorneys reached out to me. Okay. And when did the attorneys reach out to you? May 3rd. May 3rd. And yeah. you talked to the attorneys at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not Camille, but um, Gerilyn. Okay. And then have you seen any other parts of the trial? No, she instructed me not to watch anything about it, regardless no. of if it was about Hicksville or not. So I haven't, I've been Since keeping off, off the internet and turning off uh, anything that seems to be like it's on social media. So I just don't watch any of that. Okay. All right. I don't think he's catching. 
So, Mr. Knight, you were contacted by an attorney for Mr. Depp on May 3rd? Yes. Okay. And you said it was Carolyn? Gerilyn. Gerilyn. Oh, Gerilyn. I got it. Okay. And what... I think it's pronounced Gerilyn. Okay. Can you tell us the conversation you had with her at that time? Yeah, she um, just asked me my recollection of the evening, and I told her, and she said, okay, um, would you mind testifying? And I said, sure. And she said, uh, okay, well then, we're not sure if we're going to call you or not, but just in case, please don't watch anything having to do with the case. And I said, I will do. Um, now, how well, is it that... To your best knowledge, how is it that Gerilyn was able to get hold of you? How, do you? how did she know that you knew something? So, like I said, two of my innkeepers, my innkeeper and my manager, had reached out to her team, um, I think through email, and one of them uh, texted me and said, hey, do you mind if we give Gerilyn your phone number? Now, you also communicated uh, on Twitter, did you not, about this case? Yeah, two weeks prior to Gerilyn reaching out to me, um, someone had made a comment about something that happened by the fire pit, and I said, that's not my recollection. I didn't see, that's not, that's not what I saw. So who was it that made a comment about something that happened at the fire pit? So once um, I was told about be nice, uh, the fact that Hicksville was mentioned, I went and did a Twitter search of Hicksville trailer. So it was, I don't know who it was, but I was just like, what are they saying about Hicksville? And so that was um, why I did a search just to see, because it was weird and fascinating because the night to me um, wasn't that remarkable in the context of all the different experiences I've had at the trailer palace. So explain to me, please, what you mean by you did a trailer search. So if you go to Twitter and you put in keywords and do a search, all the um, tweets regarding that subject come up or anything with those keywords in it. So that is how I found the tweet that I replied to. Okay. And how many tweets did you find that mentioned Hicksville when you did that trailer oh, search? Oh, who gives a fuck? Probably like five or six. I only replied to one of them. Okay, and what do you recall those tweets saying about Hicksville? Um, the what? one that I replied to How many? said that who cares? Uh, there was some incident by the fire pit and, uh, and Johnny was yelling at Amber um, and I replied that my, that I didn't see that. I was there all night and I was, you know, I was working that night so I didn't see anything like that. Like, so your best recollection on that one was that somebody said somebody was testifying that Johnny was yelling at Amber? Yeah, and I, I believe um, grabbed her or something along those lines. Okay. Do you recall who said Johnny was yelling at Amber and grabbed her? I have no idea. It was a stranger, so I didn't really pay attention to who was writing it. All right, and you said that you responded to it. How did you respond to it? I said that's not what happened. I was there all night. Um, uh, yeah, basically. I'm that, paraphrasing. It was a, a Did you say ago. anything about what you thought happened? I just said that didn't happen. I didn't say what I mean. I think I believe I said maybe something along the lines of uh, from what I saw, Amber was the one acting jealous, not Johnny. And you said this to one of the tweets? Yes. Do you recall whether that was the Umbrella Man? I don't recall. Who the it's a ridiculous fuck? name, though. The okay. what? So tell me about the other five uh, tweets the fuck that you it? recall seeing when you ran your trailer search. Um, I think they were similar in nature, but I, didn't, I don't specifically remember the details of them. Uh, that was pretty much the, umbrella the only man. one I remembered. And... That's the only one I replied to. Do you remember anything about the other five and what was said? No. Okay. When you said that somebody told you about a security guard, what was your understanding of what the security oh, guard they, said? They, okay. 
Um, I just I got a text that uh, somebody in the trial had said uh, that they were talking about Trailer Palace at, during the trial. And so that's what led me to go on Twitter and do a search. Cameraman, please. And did you have any communications with the two innkeepers about what you knew or what you thought? No, I hadn't talked to them in years and so, still haven't regarding the case. So how is it that the innkeepers then contacted you and said, do you mind if we give you the telephone number to the attorneys? Because they still have me in their phone and um, Christy, who was the manager at the time, is the one that texted me and said, um, hey, do you mind if we pass this along? They, um, Mr. Depp's attorneys want to talk to you. Do you mind if we pass what along? Your phone number. Right, but how is it that, what is the communication you had with the innkeepers that even led them to understand that you believed you had knowledge about Hicksville, the Hicksville incident? Oh, there was no conversation. They're trying really hard to get him thrown out, right? They were both working that same night. Um, Jenna was the innkeeper and she was there along with me that night. Christy was the one who texted me and they, she They want to suppress information 100%. Shift. And I slept over. I was um, living in Keeper that night. So I'm trying to understand. So just based on the fact that seven years ago, they happened to know that you were working that night. Nine years ago, and it's because I was there okay. with them. My math, well, it's 2022 right now, and that was... What year? Oh, that was 2013. 2013. You're right. Okay. Jesus, so, get how smoked. How is it that out of the blue they remembered nine years ago? Out of the that, blue? That you worked there that night and that you might have some knowledge. I mean, to be honest, like we do get um, celebrities sometimes, but it was, you know, it's not that unmemorable. It's not like it's any other night of the week. So I'm sure they remembered the specifics of that night. Had Mr. Depp's attorneys ever attempted to contact you before? No. Had you ever attempted to contact Mr. Depp's attorneys before? No. I had no interest. All right. Have you had any conversations with Mr. Depp's attorneys other than the one you described with Gerilyn? Um, since? Yes. Well, I met with Camille last night. All right. And what did you, what was that conversation? Please describe. I just went through, um, you know, the story again that I had told Gerilyn. And let's let's hear what that story was. You want me to go through? Yes. The whole story, um, Your Honor. We would object to attorney work product. That is, I mean, that's There's a lot. No attorney work product. No, I'll overrule that. Right. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, that I. I described like them getting to the trailer palace, uh, the uh, me showing them around, the interactions I had when I was on duty with Mr. Depp and Mr. Her or Miss Hurd. I saw um, really. how uh, the evening progressed throughout the night, the levels of drinking and drug use that I witnessed, um, the uh, um, what the state of the damaged trailer the next morning um and basically just, are... yeah the details that I, I i had only um you know spent total 45 minutes to an hour with mr depp um and miss heard throughout the e throughout the entire course of the night so it was my um, recollection of those events during that time and what did Ms. Vasquez said to you. Your Honor, this is uh, beyond, we object on the grounds that it's beyond the scope of the voir dire. No, which is limited I think whatever to the three she criteria. said to him but is May I very please finish quick. stating my objection, Your Honor? Go ahead, yes, sir. The objection is that it's beyond the scope of the voir dire, Your Honor, enumerated the three criteria which are relevant here. And this is a rebuttal witness, so. Your Honor, whatever Ms. Vasquez shared with him is going to be very important. Good job, Camille. Because they knew by this time he was going to be a witness. So well, that, that's what, last night. So right. how does that fit into one of the three factors of deciding whether or not he's going to testify? Well, one of the three factors, you're, well, Your Honor, may I approach so that the witness doesn't hear? Okay, that's fine. Okay. This witness doesn't give a fuck. He's, dude. 
it's just weird, like, that they're reaching so hard to how he knows and how they remember. It's like, dude. Yeah, I, I think it's just weird. I, th I think it's just annoying. I get it. They're trying their hardest, but with how much time they have left, they're trying to get him thrown out. I mean, they know this guy knows shit. Mr. Knight, did yes. Ms. Vasquez they know he knows. provide you with any information that anyone had testified to or uh, said at any point? No, she didn't talk about anything except for asking me my experience and, and just getting a clear understanding know. of what my experience How was. They know? She didn't mention anything outside of the scope of what I saw and just asked me for the facts and told me, just tell the truth and let me know, you know. Do you know what any of the witnesses said in this trial? About, I mean, outside of what I described earlier with the, um, a friend of mine texting that someone was talking about Trailer Palace, I do not. Do you know whether any of the witnesses testified about any jealousy? Uh, other than the tweet that I replied to, no. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, may we approach? All right. Well, do you have any questions? Oh. All right. Sir, if you could ha ha have a seat back outside the courtroom. Sure. Thank you. Now, now she's going to yes, try to use whatever he said. To say that, he, that he's not fit for, um, he's, not, he's, not, he's not fit for his testimony as a witness. Of course he is. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that he that he was that he was still there and he has, he has something to say about it. It's a big deal that 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 um, the story is false and some people reach out to him if it was there because he was and it's a testimony. Good, it is a big deal that, that it's a good testimony. And it's not, I think it's weird. Yeah, also it's good because he was sober. That's a good point. That is a good point if he's on a job and he's sober and everybody is, is absolutely fucking smoked on mushrooms and shit like that. Um, It's definitely a good thing. And I, I think like they were trying to discredit like Johnny, I think, when, when he was testifying because he was high. When Amber self-reported... She was high as well. She was like, "Yeah, I took a bunch of. I took. I. I, I think she took. I just took some. Well, I took some some MDMA or some mushrooms over there. But then, and then she she, she completed. Yeah, but after it was it was like like it was like nothing, you know. I was ironic. When Johnny's high, when Johnny takes drugs, oh, okay, he's what? He's in space, dude. Johnny's he's floating in the cosmos, man." Whenever she takes drugs or alcohol, she's immune. Yep. She's she. We've seen over or in the span of the trial that she is immune to drugs. We have we have known we have known it since the beginning now. No drugs, no alcohol can affect you in any in any way, shape, or form. I dropped some food. No, I didn't. Shut up, bitch. I want to hear a story. If Amber is out of time, can you cross examine? They cannot. They cannot. They can? I heard they cannot. That's what I heard. That they literally cannot. Because they're, they're out of time. Everybody was given an equal amount of time. About a week ago, they had about 20, 24 to 28 hours left. And now, they had, uh, yesterday, or uh, uh, the, yeah, I think yesterday, they said that they both, uh, they, they had uh, five and 15, or eight and 15 hours remaining, something like that. And now they're down to the wire. They're down, they have like, I think, uh, an hour and a half left, something like that. 
They, they, they nearly have nothing. It was four and five yesterday. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. What happened when the time ends? When the time ends, I, I, I would assume it's just going to be um, whoever has time left to do their one man show. But it's not crazy. It's not crazy because um, I mean they can't really explore the depth of some of the some of the questions, some of the topics. They only explore the depth that they want to, without cross examination. I would assume. I don't know much about this shit, dude. But from the information I'm given, that's kind of where um, I would assume it would it would go like. It's fair. It's fair. They have time. I mean, I just don't know why, why they're trying so hard to get his testimony uh, thrown out, when his testimony is just as, if not more valid, than Johnny's or Amber's about the events, right? Because he was sober, self-admittedly, I would assume, Un unless they get high on the job, or I don't know, unless they get high on the job, they did. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that he wasn't. Alright. Then he got paid? Hello? I think that the connection... It's their stream, not mine. It's, no, it's nobody, it's, it's, it's just them. Dude, what's happening, chat? Look, this is the, this is the other stream. This is their stream. If it, if there's lag, it is not me. It's them. Uh, give me give me the link the link to the Twitch channel. Got it. Uh, they're also lagging. Oh yeah, we're gonna go with CBS for now. They're gonna know. How do they know? They're okay, gonna so know. You could, just stay, you could just stay there while we get the jury, okay? Alright, are we ready for the jury? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Why you don't like my TikTok meme? Come on now. Be nice. I have to stand up, but I have to pee, so it's a good time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the interruption. You're going to notice as we get closer to some the matters we have to take up have outside your presence, okay? All right, thank you. All right, your next witness. Outside your presence, okay? All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Knight, if you could come forward to be sworn. All right, Mr. Knight, if you could come forward to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case in a penalty of law? Sir, so if you have a seat. Good afternoon, Mr. Knight. Good afternoon, Camille. Would you please state your full name for the record? Morgan Higby Knight. Mr. Knight, where are you from? I live in Los Angeles, California. And what do you do for a living? So I currently own and run Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast in Idlewild, California. And I created and ran uh, Hicksville Trailer Palace in Joshua Tree, California starting in 2009. Sounds fun. 
And how is Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast different from Hicksville Trailer Palace? So Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast is Sorry. is um, up in the mountains of Idlewild, which is a beautiful like snow town above Palm Springs. And um, all the units are A-frames instead of trailers, which we have. It's obviously a very different climate than Joshua Tree, which is a desert area. Um, the rooms, which are themed at both places, are uh, trailers, finished trailers from the 50s through the 70s. I love Palm Springs. At Hicksville Trailer Palace. So um, there's also different kind of amenities. There's a pool in Joshua Tree. Um, there's a rec room up at... Uh, Hicksville Pines. When did you first become the owner of the Trailer Palace? Trailer Palace, I started building it in 2009. It took about a year with uh, my collaborator, Stephen Butcher, and on the trailers. And we got done and opened um, in 2010. Did there come a time that you sold the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, I did at the beginning of 2020, I um, had some health issues and just it was oh. too much to run both at the same time. So I chose Idlewild because it was newer and shinier. And just for my sake, um, how long did you own the Trailer Palace? So 10 years of us being open, 11 years total. And what was the Hicksville Trailer Palace? So um, it started out as a uh, artist retreat. I was a filmmaker at the time and wanted a place to get away and work on film projects outside of Los Angeles. Uh, I also put in a recording studio so musicians could record records there. Uh, I That's had lived cool. in New Orleans for five years and there's an amazing recording studio there called Kingsway where all the Musicians would come and they'd live in this big mansion and record their records. And I just thought that was a really neat thing for artists to be able to get away and create their, um, create whatever they were working on. Over the course of the uh, build out of all the trailers, theme trailers, which I'm a huge fan of this hotel called Madonna Inn. And uh, so I wanted to do really detailed themed trailers. It became too expensive to just make a living off of an artist retreat, so I decided before I was done to both an artist make retreat. So well. I decided before I was done to make it a hotel as well. And what were your job responsibilities, generally speaking, I'm when you owned I'm the trying to get a bit of best quality boss So job. I would um, be living manager some nights, um, a couple nights a week. I would also drive out from Los Angeles twice a week and bring supplies that you can't get out in the Yucca Valley area and Joshua Tree. Um, there's just a lot of things like, you know, smart and finals, Costco's and stuff. So I would drive that stuff out. Um, there's also no uh, USPS. So sometimes I'd have to get things shipped to my house and drive them out as well. Uh, I would also just do um, constantly building and creating new stuff at Trailer Palace, uh, whether it's new trailers or amenities. So I would be working on that stuff as well. I'm a big fan of the fact that Disneyland is always making it better and better. Oh, that's cool. And when you were the live-in manager, does does that mean that you spent the night at the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, we have a house on site um, where the recording studio was, and there's a bedroom in there. So whoever is live-in manager those nights um, stays in the house and, and basically lives there. There's a kitchen and everything. Have you ever met the plaintiff in this case, Mr. Depp? I had met him really briefly at the Viper Room in the late 90s. Um, uh, I had worked with some of the people that performed there and was good friends with uh, Squirrel Robin from the Pussycat Dolls and um, some other friends in this band, The Imposters. So I was there and I met him once. How about Miss Hurd? Ever met her? I had never met her before. Um, they were guests at the hotel. When was the first time that you met Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd together? Um, in late May 2013, uh, when they were guests, uh, Mr. Depp's assistant Nathan had rented out the entire place so they could have a night um, there in privacy. Jesus, the whole thing. And what do you recall, if anything, about Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's arrival to the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Mr. Depp got lost, uh, so um, his security guard, who arrived early, asked me if I could go fetch them because <laughs> He had an old car that um, didn't really fare on the dirt roads out there, which are pretty horrible. So um, <laughs> I went out and 
made sure that they got themselves and the car back to Higgsville safely. Do you remember approximately at what time that was? It was three to four in the afternoon. What was Mr. Depp's demeanor when they first arrived? At Trailer Palace, he was super excited about the place, really complimentary, um, just had a lot of questions and um, was just seemed like he was in a really great mood. Camille. And how about Miss Hurd's demeanor? Anything stick out? She was pretty quiet. Um, she uh, just kind of didn't say that much when I was giving them the tour of the grounds and the trailer. And was anyone else with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd when they first arrived? Uh, there was people that were arriving throughout the afternoon. So um, there was, uh, um, I think, 10 to 12 people total ended up staying. Uh, the security guard had gotten there earlier and just to check out the place. But, um, but yeah. And did I understand your testimony previously that the entire trailer park was rented out by Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yeah, the whole place slept, I believe at the time, about 25 people, but there was only 10 to 12 in this party. And who was part of that party besides Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, I'm really horrible with names, but I remember one of them was uh, Ms. Hurd's sister and the security guard I mentioned before, but I honestly forgot his name too. What happened when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd first came onto the property? So um, I gave them a tour of, we give all guests a tour of their specific trailer and the grounds and um, show them around the... Uh, That's what it looks like. Yeah. When someone rents the whole place, they get uh, another trailer called the bar trailer, which is basically a place to set up their alcohol and stuff. And some people in the group were just putting their beverages in that area. And where were you when uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did there come a time when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd went to the bar trailer? Um, I didn't notice most of the time that it, my interactions it? with them, everything's kind of centrally located. So there's a fire pit, bar trailer, and picnic tables all right in the same area. So they were generally around that area the entire evening that I saw them. And what did you observe of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd as the evening progressed? Um, so Mr. Depp was Newtown super, uh, just super curious and really nice. Um, he was also really interested in my innkeeper because she was a musician, so they would talk about music a lot. At one point, uh, the innkeeper who lived at the next door property went home and grabbed her guitar and they had um, sung a song or two around the campfire. Uh, in the early evening. Um, there was another instance where Mr. Depp, the innkeeper, her name is Jenna, and myself were talking about books and music, and Ms. Hurd came over and kind of interjected. She seemed a little annoyed that um, Mr. Depp wasn't spending time with her. What about Ms. Hurd's demeanor made you think that she was annoyed? Um, I think just generally she, uh, it's hard, like she, I think, uh, oh, no. I don't know, it, it was just, it was just like a gut reaction, like I, I, I can't describe it, but, um, you know. Oh, no. How long were you with Mr. Depp and Miss Heard that evening? Generally. So what throughout the course the of the fuck? evening, I was probably 40, mostly with Mr. Depp, but 45 minutes to an hour total. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, we that's all know what he means, but the jury might the night not. After the check-in. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. Depp, Depp interact with other people, guests on the property that evening? Yes. Um, I saw him hanging out with his security guard at one point and um, outside of the uh, time that him and Jenna were singing around the campfire, he was off by himself um, a lot of the time and Ms. Hurd was over at the, uh, at the um, campfire with her friends and seemed to have a good time. And if you haven't already, can you generally describe for the jury your observations of Ms. Hurd that evening? Um, yeah, she was, uh, she was, seemed to be having a really nice time with her friends around the campfire. Um, and 
yeah, everyone was in a pretty good mood. Did there come a time in the evening that you observed Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard have a disagreement or an argument? Yes. Um, I was speaking with Mr. Depp uh, just one on one, talking about Hicksville, and um, Ms. Heard uh, came over and she said that I want to talk to you and seemed really upset about something. So I went and um, back in the house because it was really, um, they went off on their own and they, she started yelling at him and I, I didn't want to hear it. It honestly was really triggering because I've been in a emotionally abusive Objection. relationship before. Objections. Move to strike. What's the objection? You're up for me. We reproach. Okay, sure. Van Walden. Damn. What, they don't want him to seem like relatable to the jury or like uh, seem seem too likable or seem to like he's trying to like uh I mean it's it's kinda of, it's kinda of fair, but I mean it kinda of makes him look bad, I don't know. Let's see how that goes. You think he's pandering? It could it could be. I mean I I'm just I'm just watching. Mr. Knight, will you please just explain for us what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having an argument? Yes. Um, so, Ms. Hurd asked him to go talk um, off to the side, and she was upset at him, and she was yelling at him. Um, and I personally had been in Objection. A All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. If okay. you could just explain to the jury um, what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having an argument. Okay. Um, he was kind of cowering and seemed almost afraid, and um, it was really, like, odd to see because he was older than her, obviously, so, um, but I just went back in the house because I didn't Objection. want to. You, you went to what he did. All right, I'll sustain us to... Yeah, this guy needs to stop. He, I mean, so after you observed I, I don't mind him, but fair to say you went back to the tra to your house on site? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. Um, what happened after that? So when I saw Mr. Depp um, on my next rounds, he apologized profusely and said, I'm really sorry about that. She was upset. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustain. Next question. What, if any, type of reaction did Mr. Depp have? He was just really... Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. He's going to say it again. It's the reaction. It's not the statement. All right. If you could make that clear, that's yeah. fine. Just what type of physical reaction did Mr. Depp have after the argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? He honestly, throughout the rest of the night, became a lot more quiet and, um, and was uh, just very more petulant. In the beginning of the night, he... Um, was a lot more outgoing and extroverted and throughout as the course of the night went on he was less and less so and more quiet Did you observe any of the guests consuming alcohol while on the property? Um, I assume they were I mean people had cups and there was alcohol set up in the bar trailer, but I didn't Physically see them pour alcohol into their cup and cup go into the mouth per se did you witness Mr. Depp drink any alcohol that evening? I couldn't say. Okay. Anything about Mr. Depp's demeanor that made you think he was perhaps intoxicated? Yes. Um, as the night went on, he, uh, I am a former bar owner, so I'm, even though I wasn't drinking that night, I'm very familiar with the uh, signs. So um, just enough, as the enough. night went on, like I said, he became more and more quiet, but he also, as we would have conversations, his uh, head would kind of sway a little bit back and forth, which was a little, you know, it was he was much less sharp than he was earlier in the night. He's not throwing. Did Ms. Heard appear intoxicated to you? Um, she did. Uh, she seemed, I think when she was angry at him, it, it seemed like she was intoxicated, but that's just based on my experience and my own personal trauma dealing with abuse. Well, okay. like...
Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike. All right. I'll sustain the objection. I'll strike it from the record. Please I mean, dude, I'm telling you, dude, I, dude. Did you observe anyone do or take drugs? I did not. Did you witness Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interact other than the argument that you previously described for the jury? Um, the, at the end of the night, I heard a commotion. I was inside the house and came out. I couldn't tell what was going on. Um, and Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were having a discussion about, um, about I, I'm not sure what, but then they went to their trailer. At that point, a lot of people had already gone to bed. So um, it, it just kind of petered out. Everyone went to bed, including myself, and I didn't hear anything else the rest of the night. What time did the evening come to an end? I'd say it was almost around 3 a.m. Did you ever see Mr. Depp grab anyone? Jackson leading. Sustained. Did you ever see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection leading. Sustained. Did you notice anything interesting, uh, anything in particular? Did you about ever witness Mr. Depp get angry that evening? Objection leading. Sustained. Anything in particular? What if anything happened the next morning? Oh! Um, the next morning, Got we have to check out at noon at the time. What if uh, anything? COVID. And so uh, around 11 o'clock, my innkeepers let me know that there was some damage. Objection, and, hearsay. Um, Did something happen that caused you to go to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer? Yes, I was informed that. Objection, hearsay. It's not being offered for the truth, Your Honor. I mean, it, may we approach on this okay, one topic? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's his testimony. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Chat. It seems like chat feels a lot for the guy, so it's like hard to think objectively. But I mean, he's going a lot about like um. Like, what he feels about something because of his his own. But dude, it, it's a witness about an event. Like you can't. You can't what go too hard on that. Morning, Mr. Knight. Uh, the oh, I think he's lying. keepers let me know that there was some damage in one of the trailers, and it happened to be Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer. So I wanted to inspect the uh, trailer because I was extremely worried. Um, all those trailers that Steve and I worked on were like my babies, and. Um, the one they were staying in was the only one that was mostly original and restored 1950s style. And so I was uh, very concerned. Oh. So what did you observe when you went to the trailer? I observed that um, there was a light sconce by the bathroom um, in the bedroom that had been broken off the wall and a couple pieces were on the floor and they were um, and yeah, it was basically just broken. The light fixture was hanging on the wall still, <gasps> except for the pieces that were on the floor. Did you come to understand how that happened? They wrecked foundation, the place. Foundation and All right, light. foundation. I'll sustain as to foundation, how he knew. Did you ask how the sconce was broken? Objection, hearsay. Sustained. Come on, Camille. How often do light fixtures in the trailers break? Um, they break uh, pretty often. I mean, it's not like a usual thing, but things in the trailers generally get broken because it's all vintage trailers. And um, I would say as much as every couple weeks, there's some incident of damage in one of the trailers. In this case, Mr. Depp had told me that. Objection, Dave. Objection. Objection. Um, so anyway, yes. Beyond the light fixture, was anything else in the trailer damaged? No, everything else looked fine. In fact, we have a, a, something we call a piggy fee uh, that we address to guests that if there's anything what we call inconsiderate or unusually large messes, we charge them extra for it for a $25 an hour cleaning fee, but they did not receive one of those because everything outside of light fixture looks fine. And what was your reaction to seeing the damage? Why is she laughing? Fixture? What's funny? Um, to be honest, I was relieved because it was not a big deal. I just tucked, there was already another light in the room. So I just tucked the wires in the wall until I had a few months later time 
to um, buy. It was matching sconce with another one in the room. So I had to, on eBay, find a matching pair that would fit there. And uh, when I finally got around to it, I was able to get that and charge it to uh, Nathan, who had, whose credit card I had. And what was your understanding of who Nathan was? Mr. Depp's assistant. Okay. And what did you charge Nathan or Mr. Depp for replacing that, that pair of light fixtures? The pair came out to $62. While you were on site, um, Mr. Knight, did you ever wear a mesh shirt? <laughs> no, I would uh, absolutely never wear that. <laughs> At any time during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's stay on the property, did you see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection I did not. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, that answer was? Uh, I, I never saw Mr. Depp get physical with anyone when I saw him. Thank you, Your right. Honor. Next Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Knight, you are a pretty big fan of Johnny Depp, aren't you? I am not. To be honest, uh, throughout the evening, I... Uh, I sorry, I, I just asked you one question. Oh, I, I, I didn't apologize. ask you the rest of that. I you apologize. wanted to participate in this trial, didn't you? I did not. I you was knew? asked by the attorney, and I wanted to, they um, asked me and I said, I'll be happy to come and tell the truth. You knew this was on camera, that it was being broadcast to whoa, a lot of people. Whoa, 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 lady. And you saw testimony, did you not in this case? And you seized the moment and responded to the umbrella guy, the lead whoa. person for Mr. Depp's Twitters. Lady. Not? Objection, Your Honor. La Are lady. Compound. Oh, overruled. Uh, Mr. Umbrella Guy is the lead, the lead You one. know that he is, he leads one of the most predominant pro dep Twitters out there. Oh. I have no idea. I don't care or follow the Umbrella Guy. In fact, you do follow a Twitter called Johnny Depp Fan, don't you? Absolutely not. You don't? That's your testimony no. under oath? It is my testimony under oath. All right. And on April... 21st, Mr. Depp testified in this case about Hicksville, didn't he? I wasn't here. And in fact, you what the fuck? tweeted in response to the umbrella guy <laughs> on April 21, 22, quote, that never happened. I was with them all night. Amber was the one acting all jealous and crazy. Do yes, you recall I, writing that? I do recall writing that. Michelle, can well, you bring that up, please? We're going to call it Defendants 1903. 1903. The Umbrella Guy, Pagman. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you to redact, leaving the Umbrella Guy and the date and the bringing in the Hicksville. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I'm just I just wrote a book. Guys, I think she's probably referring to somebody well, who changed. She's working on that. Did you write and direct a piece called Matters of Consequence back in 1999? I did. And didn't Mr. Depp's first wife, Lorianne Allison, work as a makeup artist on that? She absolutely yeah. did. And while we're looking at that, uh, four days after you tweeted to Umbrella Man. It's that Umbrella Man. That was Umbrella Guy. The um, umbrella Guy. Okay. Well, all right. Now we have this up. I'm going to ask you to take a look what is Defendant's Exhibit 1903. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And that's from that Umbrella Guy on 421-22, correct? Correct. And it says, bringing in the Hicksville incident accusations. Do you see that? 
I do. And there's clearly Mr. Depp testifying there, likely a video, right? Okay. And you respond, that never happened. I was with them all night. Amber was the one acting all jealous and crazy. Do you see that? I do. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendants 1903. Any objection? Yeah, Your Honor, we believe the first part of the um, that umbrella guy's tweet should be unredacted Re for context. Oh, um, well. It it, it, I have no it, idea what it, I was replying to. It's, it's hearsay. It's, it's rank hearsay, and the context Your Honor, is not necessary. Your approach. Of course. Take a look. You know what's crazy, though? That's crazy, though? They're going to try to say, right, probably that, that he watched a clip, and he watched the content of the thing, right? So he saw what happened, so, you know, uh, you know, he said he didn't watch a lot of clips or not, a lot of whatever, right? He said he, he said he said that clip or not. Chat, did he say did he watch the clip or not? I don't, I don't think he did. He only saw the title, right? That's what he said. And normally you would say, yeah, I mean, that's that's suspicious, bro. But then you realize that uh, the defendant's arguments over uh, Amber Heard's tweets have always been that even though she made an original tweet, not a reply, she doesn't know what she tweeted, the title, nothing, nothing. Right. And now they're trying to reverse Uno card on him. With that redaction, any objection? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, 1903 will be in... Evidence with as redacted. Okay. So they're gonna redact the thing he replied to, but not what he now, didn't so see. So you reached out to the umbrella guy in this text, this Twitter, right? I wouldn't call it reaching out. Okay. In fact, the umbrella guy is in Mr. A Mr. Adam Waldman. Do you know who Adam Waldman is? I have no idea. Well, he's testified earlier that he talks to the umbrella guy. That um, he what? He talks to the umbrella guy? Yeah. Were you aware of that? I honestly, this sounds like a like schizophrenia. <laughs> okay. Now, four days after this. Uh, event where you texted your honor. Yeah, it's in. Okay, good. Four days after that, you tweeted something pretty nasty about Elon Musk, didn't you? I did. Okay, thank you. So you don't like Elon <laughs> Musk, right? Objection well, relevance. Oh, I, I don't know Elon oh, Musk. Overruled. Thank you. So that was uh, the context of that is that he had... I didn't ask you for the context. I apologize. Okay. Um, but you texted something <laughs> that had swear words in it. Would you agree about Elon Musk? Yes. Okay. Oh, now, forget. let's talk about your uh, recollections here. 45 minutes to an hour. Your recollection is that Mr. Depp actually drove there? Yes. What type of car was he driving? An old one that was a convertible. An old convertible? I'm not a car guy, so I couldn't express okay. the model. All right, and your recollection was this was May of 2013? Yes. Okay, do you recall when in May? Late May. Okay. Now, you said that you spent a total of 45 minutes to an hour with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, is that correct? After the, mostly Mr. Depp, but that's after the tour and after they were checked in throughout the course of the night. Okay. And you don't recall any of the people that were there other than Ms. Hurd's sister and the security guard, correct? I don't recall any of their names. Do you remember how many of them were female? I believe it was predominantly female. Do you remember how many males were there? I don't, outside of the security guard. Do you remember what any of the other people looked like? Um, they honestly just seemed like youngish hipsters, like for lack of a better term. I know that previously a couple of them had stayed at Hicksville Trailer Palace. That's how they knew about the place. Okay. So you didn't, you don't NPCs. recall seeing how much anybody had to drink that night, correct? I did not witness that. And you, do you recall the use of drugs at all? You said no I way. did not witness Asked that. Asked and answered. Okay. Were you sitting oh, at no, any no. point 
with these people at the campfire? I was not. Okay. Um, and when you said that uh, that you saw Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd was yelling at Mr. Depp, where were they? they she pulled him uh, for a chat and it was off um, towards their trailer, like a little bit off towards the dirt. How many feet were there between the campfire and their trailer? The campfire and their trailer? Yes. Approximately 75. Okay, so where in that 75 feet did Ms. Hurd pull Mr. Depp and uh, yell at him and he cowered? 20. Okay, 20 from, from the campfire. From the, the campfire. Yeah. So your testimony is that Ms. Hurd grabbed Mr. Hurd, pulled him 20 feet over, yelled at him and he cowered. Yes, that's, that's what I witnessed. And then did they go back? I, I went inside the house. So you don't know whether they returned to the campfire or Mr. they returned Turner. to the trailer? I do not. Okay. Um, that and do that you was not very nice. Whether there were any uh, disagreements or physical communications, anything of that nature, at the campfire? I do not. She's going to get sued now. Do you know whether Mr. Depp did anything to anybody else at the campfire? I didn't see anything. Okay. Do you know whether Mr. Depp grabbed anybody's wrist and told them, asked them if they knew how many pounds of pressure it took to break their wrist? I wasn't there the whole time. Okay. Do you, is it your testimony that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd went last to their trailer? Everybody else went before them? They all, the rest of the people, I think about half of them had already gone to bed and they went, um, they went, I can't, it was all around the same time at the end of the night that the rest kind of scattered. There might have been a couple of people that went right after them or right before, but it was all around the same time. Okay, so so your recollection is that when Amber and Johnny Depp went back to their trailer, that dissipated, Every, everybody then left at no. that point? Yes. Okay, now uh, how far away was your house that you were staying uh, in from the trailer that Amber and Johnny Depp were staying in? I'd say it was about 75 feet away. Okay. Um, and the next time that you saw or heard anything was when you went there in the morning and saw the broken scots. Is that Yes, correct? I didn't hear anything after I went to bed. Okay. And that's the extent of your knowledge? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. All right. Redirect. <clears throat> Okay. Mr. Knight, how did you get involved in this trial? <laughs> um, I got a text from one of our old employees who I didn't talk Objection to for years. Objection hearsay? Uh, right. Don't tell us what the text said. Just how did okay. you get involved? I got a, I got a text okay. from... I, I got a... That's still hearsay, Your Honor. Okay. Objection. No. Overruled. Thank you. Go on, Mr. Knight. I was asked... How's that hearsay? Uh, oh, no. Objection that. hearsay? <laughs> Apologize. Um, uh, what did you? I got a text. What did you, you received a text. Okay. Yes. From and whom? From a former employee. Okay. And how long had it been since you had heard from this former employee? Approximately five years. Okay. And did you contact Mr. Depp or any of his attorneys? Objection. Leading. That's fine. Oh. He takes his time. It's fine. I did not. How did you get in touch with Mr. Depp's attorneys? They got in touch with me. I Objection, hearsay. Oh, overrule. Go on, Mr. Knight. Uh, they, they reached out to me. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's I, okay. I don't have an objection right now. I think <laughs> it's only if he talks more. Next question. That's annoying as fuck. And this how do you feel about witch. participating in this trial? Objection, relevance. Extremely relevant, considering that they have accused him of I, I, being oh, overruled. Thank yeah, you. Jesus. How do I feel about it? Yeah, um, I'm happy to tell what I saw, and that's the extent of it. I really don't care okay. outside of that. Thank you very much, Mr. Knight. Nothing All further. right. I assume this witness is not subject to recall. Is that correct? All right, sir. So you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Your next witness. Or is it going to be a deposition, or is it going to... 